Okay, so in this solo, the very first thing I did, and this is one of my favorite exercises on earth, uh, you know, if I'm if I want to punish myself, is uh, I'll sit there with I'll sit there with two pitches, and I will try and improvise with it for as long as possible. So uh, the two I started with were E and D. So I just kind of I just kind of sat there and was just trying to come up with as many ideas as I could with just those two notes. So. Um, Typically what I'll do, I'll, I'll stick on one for a while and, you know, treat the other one as a destination. So if I started on the E, three, four. So by the time it, like when I go to that other note, it's like, ah, cool. You know, we've changed notes. I've been hearing this note for so long. Um, but you know, if you can uh, generate enough rhythmic interest, you know, just on the one note, it's, uh, we can hang out on that for a while. So that's definitely what I was doing to start with. So, uh, you know, so that's, that's, a, that's a lot of what I'm thinking about, whether I'm playing lines or, you know, whatever part of the neck that I'm at, I'm always, I'm always intentionally thinking about trying to phrase rhythmically. Uh, so then the next thing I did, I kind of added a couple of, I added a few notes on the next string and kind of moved into some, uh, some other areas. Uh, one sound I really like over a, uh, E nine chord, which is this entire track, basically We're just, just playing over that chord right there. Uh, I like to use both thirds. So it's like, uh, so that, that would be right there in the, in the minor pentatonic and that sound. But I also, I really like, I really like the major third as well, because that's part of the chord. So uh, it can sound pretty cool to play lines that use both of those. So. You know, it just gives you a little, a little bit more color, a little bit more stank. I don't know. It's got, it's just got some good character. Uh, let's see other things that I would do. Uh, I definitely tried to take, uh, I tried to take the, the same kind of rhythmic idea and stick to it as long as I can. So even if I took that, uh, that little, that little idea that we had before, just that one there, uh, sometimes I'll take the, I'll take the same rhythm in the same spot and I'll change the notes up. So still, still staying inside the key, still, you know, sitting there working over that E9. Uh, but yeah, I just, I'll, I'll kind of play around with that and just try and shoot around the neck and see what I come up with. So one, two, three, four. And when you step out from it, like I, you know, kind of like I did, did there, like sometimes when you hold on to an idea, you just, you reach a point where there's just not much else that you feel like you can do. <laughs> so uh, when you when you do abandon it, if you land in a cool way or you you know you jump into another idea, that's cool and it feels it feels powerful just because you've been sticking to the same thing for so long. It's a real breath of fresh air when something does change up. Uh, let me see. A huge tool on the tool belt for this chord is the uh, would be the. Uh, what are we playing over? E, so G sharp, half diminished arpeggio. This is one of my favorite dominant things to do. So uh, we're playing over this chord. So I'll kind of visualize this shape. And this uh, this is the same shape we did in the harmoni or in, the, in the diatonic arpeggios, except we're just doing it on the 11th fret. Uh, so that's going to be it. And so I'll, do, I'll start a lot of lines that way, and that's, that's one way I like to cover a good bit of ground. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, actually, actually, you know, this is, this is a lick I like to use a lot. I don't know if I did it. Um, it's kind of an old gypsy lick uh, a little bit, but that's, that's kind of coming out of this bar chord here at the 12th fret, and you start on 14, just kind of walk your way back, and then you just go straight down the dominant arpeggio. So that's going uh, two chromatic note root flat seven five three one seven flat seven. And yeah, aside from that, I just tried to. Uh, I don't know. I, I also try and keep a lot of the notes short. I try and stop the sound so stuff doesn't ring out as much, uh, and that that can help kind of add to the percussive element. So, yeah. 
you know, I'm kind of palm muting here with my right hand and that, that helps give it a little extra snap. Uh, aside, from, aside from that, what else do we do? Uh, I definitely lean on major pentatonic licks sometimes. So if we're playing on, on, over E9, I just, I've always kind of dug that sound. Um, and so that's one of my favorite things to do. I'll kind of go the fifth, the sixth, then the root, and then bend something after that. So that's, a, that's always a sound I've, I've liked. But uh, yeah, so experiment over this, you know, don't hesitate, don't hesitate to keep playing the same rhythm. Don't jump to just adding more notes. It's kind of like shoveling coal into a furnace. It's like, you, you know, if you're, if you're not phrasing <clears throat> and coming up with things that are in interesting rhythmically, you never feel like you have enough melodic stuff to play. And so when I started to think about rhythm and time and, you know, improvising rhythmically, really, I just... Uh, I stopped worrying about having a million lines to play, and it gave the lines that I already knew a better context for many situations. <laughs> 